someone brought up uh, Ravenin brought up uh, he wants us to talk a little bit more about serialized references because he just doesn't get it and I, you know I think this is going to be a common thread because even in that mm -hmm. video that I did about the 2019.3 features people a lot of comments were just like I don't, I don't understand what serialized reference is even for because I, I just don't think that a lot of Unity developers who come from like an artistic background or a background other than programming, they, they don't think they ever even use interfaces. Um, so I think, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely to talk about it. I, I brought up Unity over here. I don't know if we should throw up, throw up some code, but essentially, um, I guess the first question to ask, you know, when you're diving into understanding what a serialized reference attribute does is do you understand what interfaces are and do you understand what mm -hmm. about polymorphism and the ability to inherit from a class so and, and i hate to be that guy but a lot of people will say i understand polymorphism <laughs> you might understand the keyword and you might understand the, like oh i get it cat and dog both animal and then animal is a creature and people can be you may you may get that concept and that relationship but there is a there's there's something deeper to that idea where it's it's like the difference between someone saying I can teach you the alphabet and you understand letters you can say oh B I know what a B is yeah there's a D I get that but that's not the same as knowing how to write prose right like you can know the keyword you can know how they connect but there's a big difference between that and understanding how to apply them and rules and do interesting right, things right. with it you know sorry my cam died I'm trying to fix it real quick all right I'm back yeah so basically um. <clears throat> I guess just to real quickly pull up some code. Yeah. Um, this is some this is some code I threw together for my for Sunday's video, but um, basically, let's say, uh, let's say you wanted to encapsulate I don't know health, because I have this example here, and you said, well, instead of having health be an int, this might be a bad example, so please stop me, Jason, if you have something else. But let's say you were like, uh, well, I say oh, damage is easy. Okay. Right? You can do damage as a Dam code. Damage is fair. So. Um, Let's say you had an interface damage that represents what, how, how, how you, how you, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, uh, you're giving it a name when it's just the interface. Stream, stream coding. It ain't good. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry. It happens. So yeah. So we have this damageable yeah. thing, right? So it, yeah, go ahead. And we just have a function for doing damage. It's called damage. If we like do damage, damage. Well, I would call it damage a ball with an interface, and then uh, take damage yeah, would be maybe a, or even just two damage because damaging is like damage. Yeah, I, th function, I think right? yeah, let's do damage. damage something. I damage. Although whenever you know, whenever I do interfaces like that, I do like the able, like damageable move. Of oh, that's what I do. I, I do the interface name is damage a ball, and the method will be damage. Okay, uh, then, like, got it. Because then it. you're saying person dot damage, right? You're damaging the person. So we have an interface here, damage. Okay. So now we can make this guy inherit damageable, which means yeah. he's going to need to. But we'll need to have a parameter inside of the damage function on line seven to take in the damage quantity. Okay. Let me know if I need to make this code any bigger or larger. I can zoom in a little bit if that's too hard to read on the stream. Okay. So, th so this is the bit that I think is an interesting idea, mm. right? So already this is such a small thing, but I want to point this out. A player conceptually has health, and a player is damageable. Now, when I say that to you, you're probably thinking, of course, to, to be damaged means to lose health. That's an implicit connection. But you could have a other system where you have a crate. You create just a crate object, and a crate might have like physical integrity or a bridge or something. And if you have that object, it could also extend from or implement damageable. And in this instance, crates don't have health conceptually. It's not really the same thing, but it might have like a um, robustness quantity or, maybe or something. It just blows and up. if it hits zero, yeah. or even if it blows up immediately, yeah. So any damage will break it. And so the idea is damageable is not intrinsically tied to health. It is the thing that can happen, and losing health is one implementation of that. And so anything could be damageable. Like you could, you could later on build a system, which is like, you know, emotions. And whenever it receives damage, <laughs> it you know, cries. it gets, it feels sad. It doesn't matter. Like the point is all you're doing is saying, can this thing conform to the, to the concept of being damaged? Not 
that it has helped or a number that must change, right? You could even create a reverse world where receiving damage, in fact, heals things or something. Doesn't it doesn't matter, matter yeah. because all you're doing is saying it conforms to whatever that kind so, of So to bring this back to the serialized objects, let's just pretend I had a, a class that or a mono behavior that was like the damage tester, whatever. Um, and it was a mono behavior. What I could do now is I could provide it a list of damageables. I damageable. You could never, you couldn't do this before. So, you, you know, what am I doing? Sorry, I damageable. Um, okay, is it serialized field or serialized? Oh, reference? serialized reference. Dude, I'm already <laughs> messing up. Well, let's pretend I didn't do that. Let's say I had this thing called um, damageables. Damageables, right? Mm. And somehow I provided a list of damageables to this mono behavior. Well, whenever you would save the scene, whenever you would play the scene, if you change this list and you stop the scene, it wouldn't be able to, to serialize this list. It wouldn't be able to save it. Um, so the next time you started the game, it would be completely different. Did I misspell this? Damage. I totally did. Damageables. And so just to explain what Charles is saying there is the way things get saved, whether it's Unity or anything else, is generally a topic called serialization. You're, you're sort of you're turning it into something that can then be persisted. And the way you do that is you literally go through every individual part of it and put it away. So a good example of this would be if you're moving house, you create a box and you go through every item and you put it in the box and that box can now be moved somewhere else and unpacked again. Now, the problem is if you use interfaces, you're not defining what's in the house. So you can't you can't make a guaranteed promise that you'll put everything in the box. <clears throat> so the point of an interface, the reason interface has been a problem in Unity up to this point is because if an in interface doesn't tell you what the properties and fields inside of it are, like that's the point of it. it. It hides that stuff away. So Unity doesn't know how to serialize that. It doesn't know what's in it, so it doesn't know how to yeah. save it. Now, there's, there's hacky workarounds, like there's literally a serializable interface that's a bit meta that actually uses that concept to save itself where you, you tell the object, I don't know what you are, but figure, figure out how to save yourself. That's kind of cool. But without getting into too much detail, the way, the way Unity works is the, the inspectors actually serialize all of its content as you go. So if something isn't serializable, it won't show up in the inspector. So that's why we couldn't use interface in the inspector because it would have to have been serializable to be used in the inspector. And up until now, Unity didn't know how to serialize. That's where we're at now, and now we can potentially serialize. Right. So at runtime, let's pretend that I was, um, let's pretend I was adding to this list. I was calling from some other classes in the in the uh, from other mono behaviors from other game objects. As the game is going on, I'm calling this function add damageable, and this list of damageables is growing. Um, but if I stop my scene and replay it, all those damageables that got added as the game progressed as I in my last play, those would not have been saved. Uh, now, if we do want to save those, what I can do is I can mark it as with the serialized reference attribute. And what will happen is I can run the scene, have my code as I play, start adding damageables to this list. I can stop the scene and then this will be serialized, meaning it'll be persisted and saved. So the next time I run the scene, this list will have all those damageables in it. Um, and the key here is that it's an it's an interface. Now, before, if this was anything else, like for instance, let's say I made it just a list of crates. A crate is actually a, a class, so it's a strongly typed class. So if I did the same logic, change it to crate, now without doing anything, without the serialized reference attribute, I could run the scene, add all the crates I want, stop the scene, and they will get serialized to this list so that the next time I run it, it will, they'll, all the crates will be there. But again, going back, if I wanted to make I damageables, which is a great, this is that polymorphism that Jason was talking about. Um, the great thing about having a, an object oriented program, uh, programming language is that I don't need to know if it's a crate. I don't need to know if it's a player. And more importantly, I don't even need to know what happens when it gets damaged. It's not the point. The point of this damage test class is that I'm just going to collect a list of damageable things and I'm just going to damage them when I call damage all. So let me. Like, I, I have a, I've been trying to come up with a good example and I think I have one. So <clears throat> it's okay with you, Charles. If we could make Let's a new it. empty script, just, just in a, just a new empty file, and I want to see if I can 
hopefully explain this Jason's concept. Jason's well example. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> so imagine you own a company and it's like Amazon. It's like a delivery mm -hmm. company. So let's make a class called delivery company. Um, yeah. So we have some products. So we'll just make a class for product. It's a product that we sell. I, I, I'm going to keep this vague because none of it matters. I don't want people focused too much. Is it Amazon or is it uh, so, is it Best Buy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know what? If you no, want to call it God, Best no. Buy, go ahead. I don't <laughs> mind. <laughs> um, so we have a product that we sell, right? So we someone buys the product and... Uh, Whatever. So let's make a function in delivery company for buy product. Making a product and then, oh yeah, we'll pretend we do a buy function. So maybe do a comment and say, do buying buy code here, stuff. whatever that is. Yeah. Now, once you've bought it, you have to ship it to the client. Now, how do we ship mm -hmm. something? Well, let's start very simply and figure out what the contract is for okay. shipping something. To ship something, we need to know uh, what it is we're shipping, where it's going, and how long you have to deliver it. So let's make an interface called Deliverer. And it just has a single function called Deliver Product. And it will take in a product. It'll take in um, uh, a location. So just say string location. We'll, yeah, we'll keep yeah. it really simple for now. And then a int uh, deadline or something, whatever it is. I'm trying to think of the actual term they yeah. use. Estimated, whatever, deadline. That's when yeah. it's going to So go. now we have this concept of a thing that can deliver stuff for us. So if we were to make a um, constructor and inject that in, did I bother to be making it in? Line? We'll, we'll do it injectors. I don't want to think about making variables. So do a constructor on, on the delivery company. Now, this is technically getting into a version of control. Don't think about it. <laughs> just go just, with it. Just go with me. Go with me for now. Um, so, yeah, we've got this deliverer and we're passing a deliverer. So this delivery company knows some guy will do delivery for him. Now, so make a, make a private field for that deliverer and then call it in the byproduct. I'm just passing whatever generic variables. That, after this, we can get to the actual point of the exercise. <laughs> And then product, oh, and then yeah. just, you know, pass in, just, yeah, and then... It's going to get here you know, in... Pretend it's days, two days or something, whatever. Two days, yeah, that sounds about right for Atlanta. Right. So, what we've got here is the delivery company can just continue doing his job, which is getting products, dealing with customers, and once all of that's been done and the purchase has been done, they say, hey, deliverer, this is the thing, this is where it's going, off you go. And what's your assumption about how that's being delivered? Well, most likely it's probably delivered by a delivery van. So let's make a delivery van class that implements my deliverer. Right. So this is this is the point. We don't need to implement it. That, that's sort of that's fine for now. This is the default of what people think interfaces are. This is a straightforward. I have a promise for a contract. I have a thing that can deliver stuff for me. But here's the interesting thing. We, we are not referencing a delivery van inside of the company. We are referencing a deliverer. And so we we're making literally no assumptions about what a deliverer is. So at the most basic level, it can be a delivery van. At a more complicated level, it can be a delivery mm. network. Imagine the delivery van, uh, instead of having one van, is actually... There's too many products or the product is too big, or maybe it's going across the ocean. That delivery network could internally, first of all, use a ferry to get to one part of the country or, and then use a car for the next bit. And none of it matters to you because all you've said is here's a thing, go deliver thing, and you're leaving all of the implementation up to whoever else job it is. So it can be, it could be the product could be split across multiple vans. The product could be moved between four or five vans and the deadline divvied up between them. Uh, I've seen another example of this, by the way, where someone talked about painting. You could have one person paint a house or you could have five painters paint a house. And it doesn't matter to you. You've paid a painting company a certain amount of money to paint a house. So you are completely leaving that decision up to somebody else. 
Oh, you're getting fancy. You're well, I just wanted to right. show what that might look like. The the point the the Someone's point showing up. <laughs> showing the point up. being that you can even have. I mean, you can even have uh, you know a list of i deliverables nested in here. Yeah, you could have a network Misc. that that parses off another a part of it to another delivery network because it's outside of their region or yeah. something like that. You can go. Oh crazy yeah, you can have it. like region here, one, or you can do a dictionary. Yeah. But here's here's the bit I wanted to get to. Here's the here's the thing I wanted to kind of highlight. So we'll take that for granted. That one works. Imagine it's in the future and our our delivery system has been out for a long time. Somebody invents teleporting. Teleporting has now been invented as a new nice. concept. We've got this existing system that we don't that has been around for ten years and we've been using it quite comfortably and everyone's quite happy. Now we can make a teleport deliverer, and then yeah, and now we ne we don't even know about this. Our system that never even knew teleporting was available is now able to deliver your products by teleportation, and our code doesn't change because the concept of teleporting is <laughs> has been added after the fact and and. Because when we roll system. about roll back up being, to the actual delivery company, yeah, go all the way back up here. It doesn't say yeah. teleport anywhere because that's not a concept that was ever conceptualized at the point. It doesn't of have to know. System. It doesn't care. It just says, "Hey, I got a teleporter. That's pretty cool. Whatever." <laughs> yep. And that is kind of the point of interfaces. You're not you're not using an interface to say, "Oh, this thing has these features." You are saying, "This is the minimum specification required for me to do my job." Please go do this. Give me back the thing I need, and I'll continue on my way. And then you can inject in anyone who's able to perform that job. And so, if you think about it, this is like this is like anything, right? If you if you wanted food, you could say, "Get me food." I don't care what happens. That could be your friend making you a curry. That could be ordering from a takeaway service. That could be you know having a sandwich in your lunchbox. Conceptually, your contract is. Food on table, I eat food. I don't care where it came from or what happened. And so anytime you can extract out that concept, you'll give yourself the freedom to do a lot yeah. more things. And where it gets really, really cool is an interface, you can have multiple inheritance, which means something can be deliverable and damageable and healable and whatever else you want. And all of a sudden, you start to stack behaviors in confusingly interesting ways. For example, <laughs> I saw, I saw, I think it was... um. The War Fortress gave the example that they had containers of water. So you like a canteen of water, and it had a, some interface like a water container or, or contains liquid, liquid container. And you could say, here's liquid, give it to the container, and the container now has liquid. But later on, they added the ability for people to get drenched and have water in their clothes. So as weird as that sounds, your clothes could, in, could inherit from contains water, and you could add water to clothes, and that was never conceived of in your original spec. You were thinking of a water container that holds water, but technically clothes are a thing that could contain water, so you can add that feature, and anything that could basically make something wet can now make clothes wet just as much as they could make water, uh, make a uh, canteen wet from being with water. So there's these really weird things you can do, and I guess the, the point of the exercise is if you don't use interfaces, you have to come up with and account for every conceivable feature you might want down the line. If you use an interface, you can say, not my problem. Somebody else will figure that out later. And that's the power of it, you know? Yeah, that's definitely the power. And a roll back to this player class to show it in sort of like a gamey type example. A classic one is the damageable. Um, and now with Unity, the, what's really great is, and this is probably a serialized reference you might use for more complex things like for instance if you're creating some sort of like a grid structure or tree structure that's like an example that i've seen a lot but i mean this is something that i've run into where i'm like well you know i want to be i want to have my code nice and make my boundaries so my damageable items will be over here and but now i can actually reference a list of all my damageables and in my game controller mm -hmm. or something like that um you know or maybe like uh what, what was the inter what was the interface you were just saying where i could get wet what was that called like i yeah, it was like a water container or something. Something, something like, weird that. like that. You might have a class that's um Well a good one, weapon. How about oh, yeah, weapon? weapon. Right? Yeah. You could have a you could have a list of your weapons and your assumption could be this could be a melee weapon or it could be a gun. And it doesn't matter to you because you're just saying weapon.use and it doesn't matter whether it's an entirely different conceptual system. It could be a magic spell. So you can completely change the implementation. 
but make a list of all of your things that can conceptually be used as a weapon. And if you want to make a spoon a weapon <laughs> later, you can do that. And it doesn't actually change. Oh, your here's code, one. You know? um, equipable, or rather, uh, I equipable's one. But I was thinking like an inner, uh, an inventory. You might have an invent, I inventory yeah. item, and how that gets added to your yeah, inventory. Yeah, you could you could have a backpack uh -huh. could have an inventory, a purse could have an inventory. Yeah, you know, you could have you could have a dead body could have an inventory. <laughs> it's like you could add inventories to literally anything. To yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. Those are interfaces. Um, and, and what one comment to, uh, regarding a question here. Uh, should we always strive to extract interfaces because you'll never need that because you will never be sure in the future? Mm. No, technically, so I, I may have made it sound like go ham, add interfaces everywhere, but I want to put in a caveat. <laughs> always a caveat. There is always um, a caveat. Yeah, always a caveat. Interfaces are for, um, how do I phrase this? So everything you do in code is collaborators. Mm. So the, the word is collaborator in, in general, and that basically means. You can't do it all yourself. Somebody has to do a part mm -hmm. of it for you. For example, if you're making a sandwich, you have to have a collaborator that will make the food, collaborator who will deliver it to you, and then you may do the preparation work, but you can't manifest that stuff out of thin air. Somebody else did that for you. So what you do is you make an interface to describe the behavior of a collaborator. And you you only do that if there is a reason that you if you if you think down the line there might be a different mm -hmm. collaborator. So if you get if you get your food delivered from a certain source and there's a good chance down the line that source could no longer exist, you don't want to depend on it and you don't want your system to break when that source doesn't exist anymore, you would say food provider get food and you would make that an interface. You don't arbitrarily turn everything into interfaces. You say, is this thing something I'm reliant on that I cannot 100% guarantee will always be available or that it might have new, more fun features in the future that I want to make use of? So I would only I would say it's good practice not to even start with an interface, make the code, yeah. make it work, and for example, make a make a player that can take damage. Then later on, make a crate and it takes damage. And then you can go, hang on a second, <laughs> both of these things take damage. And then you can look at that as can I start to like pivot my code in such a way where I take the concept of damage out and I start making that this discrete thing that everything else can interact with. So I I wouldn't aim for interfaces, I would let the code kind of tell you it needs yeah. interfaces. That takes experience and it's hard to do, but you'll, if, if you see them often enough, you'll get, you'll kind of get used a, a to that. A good rule idea. of thumb is the rule of three, where if you have to, if you have to do the same thing once, twice, the third time is when you genericize it. And mm -hmm. I, I highly yeah. recommend that because even at the level of experience that both Jason and I have, even I fall into the trap of over-engineering, like right off the bat. Um, and the thing about over-engineering is that you s will often end up with a system that's more complex than your application needs, which any added, any added complexity is, I would say, bad because any added complexity makes mm. the job of the programmer more difficult. Um, so you want to try to strive for simplicity. And then the other thing I was going to say is that um, sometimes you don't really know all of the, uh, you don't really know how it's going to manifest. And sometimes you'll lock yourself in. Sometimes by genericizing, you will lock yourself into specificity, which is insane to think about. But I've done this a million times. Then you panic and you add a feature to an interface, which suddenly breaks everything, and you have to go back and rewrite 10 classes because you've decided that the movement code actually now needs to know about the size of something to make sure it can uh -huh. fit in certain yep. gaps or something. And all of a sudden it's like, oh God, I when I wrote move, I just wrote move and a vector. I didn't think I would have to take into account the size of the object. And all of a sudden every single interface, every single thing that implemented interface yeah, has to yeah. change. You got if statements, so, switches, don't, don't you, you've got like a million uh, arguments into one method to account for all these little things. Yeah, you're like, oh, size. Yeah. Well, shoot, I got to take gravity into factor. Oh, I'll just pass gravity in and I'll ignore it if if it's on this class yeah, yeah there's all sorts of things like that that really so rule of three just do it twice the third time take a really hard look and even i wouldn't even say the third time you genericize it just the third time is when you start to think about genericizing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then the fourth or fifth time you'll have a nice you'll have a nice couple classes to play with and then you can start thinking well i can generate i can genericize at least this little piece and, and then go from there. Everything is everything you do should be iterative, which speaks to a whole different, you know, conversation to have and a video that I need to do. Now, this is sort of a slightly more advanced topic, so I don't want to go too far into this, but 
Also, make sure you don't get into the bad habit of downcasting everything. Mm. So what I mean by that is once you have this idea of something as being damageable, it might be very tempting to make the vaguest <laughs> methods possible where something takes in an eye damageable and calls damage on it. And you're like, great, it's damageable now. But damaging might also need to flash the texture or change colors or do something yeah. interesting. And for whatever reason, you might need access to other properties on that damageable object. So just because something implements eye damageable doesn't mean you have to pass it around as an eye damageable object. That's a great point. So for example, with the whole grid character, you could have a character who walks around on a grid and attacks. You might be tempted to cast that thing down to an eye grid guy who has a um, position set, and that's the only function, set position, you know, zero, 05 or whatever. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, no, I need to access the fight function on this object, but I can't because I've turned it into the most abstract concept of a grid item with no no knowledge of what he does. So whenever it's humanly possible, keep things at the level they're at. The only time you ever, the only, the only time you ever go down a level and sort of make it bigger is when you want to work with a system that wasn't intended to be used with this object. This is really hard to explain, but I, what I mean is you interfaces should be used to give you maximum flexibility to interface with as many different concepts as possible. The best real world example is a plug. If you had a wire coming out of your wall, you could only ever use whatever that wire attached to. You instead have a socket that things plug into. The socket doesn't make any rules other than it is this shape providing you conform to this shape it plugs in. In fact, that can almost be a downside because you can plug in something with different voltages and break the break the item that you plug in. But that's what I'm saying. They, an interface could have been more specific and added rules where you had to like dial into the wall what you know what the the voltages of your items are. But you get into these really weird scenarios where stuff isn't worth the complexity. It makes a lot more sense to say, this is my object. It is a toaster, and it happens to support pluggable in interface, and I can then use that in a house object or a aeroplane bathroom <laughs> object because it has a plug socket that I can plug into. And it was may never have been intended for that use and it may not work as the best case scenario, but it's it's adding flexibility, not taking it away, right? You're, you're not saying it has to be just an eye plug-in. Well, it's a, it is a toaster that has very different features. So yeah, it's this is something that I think we'll need a video on yeah. expressly because it's a particularly vague topic. I, I wrote an now. example of what you were saying just now about, you know, downcasting it's like you might have a create damager yeah. that needs to play a create explosion a damage text there you go yeah it's perfect. okay to pass yeah. in just the create and call damage you know the crate can be damaged one way or another so you can call that and do everything yeah because you, you could potentially have like a number of boards on a crate that are that have broken off and you might want to like get a list of those or something and you wouldn't be able to do that if it was just a damageable and not a great object.